I think engineering certainly followed a little bit more with what my natural um, strengths were. Growing up, did really well math, science, played with Legos, not Barbies, right? That sort of building block mentality. Uh, and certainly had an opportunity to see the incredible impact an engineer can have through my father. But my shifting point, I think, was actually studying abroad, where I had an opportunity to put myself in an environment that was so foreign and so uncomfortable, and I had no idea what was going on. You know, living in a developing country, and going to school in a developing country in Fiji, uh, sounds really nice, right? I'm going to lay on the beach and I'm going to suntan all day. But the reality was I quickly realized the plight of the average person was far different than my average peer back in Iowa City. And I think it really contextualized a lot of the privilege that I had grown up with that it may or may not have actually appreciated until that moment. And so I volunteered with Greenpeace shortly, um, found the Breast Cancer Foundation at the university in that country, and was inspired. You know, there's one mammogram machine on the entire series of islands, 32 islands. So your average, average stage of diagnosis is stage three. And, you know, it's a... It's a tragic disease anywhere in the world, but lack of access to healthcare, lack of access to the knowledge of how to treat and how to, how to prevent a lot of things was something that just really flipped my boat. <laughs> you know, I had, I had really no concept. Um, and I returned a different person. I think I, for the first time, realized the privilege I'd been given, appreciated the opportunity, and really wouldn't settle for anything less than profound. The bridge project in Peru, uh, we, we tagged it Continental Crossings, uh, it was just a group of friends, you know, sitting around one day and saying, hey, we have senior design project, who else wants to actually build something rather than an academic exercise, which also has, you know, has merit, but to see something from concept to implementation is not an experience that I had ever had. And I was about to graduate as an engineer, which, if you, you know, play with that a little bit, it seems a little peculiar. Um, and more importantly, it was, we're going to go build something that's not going to just be left in a warehouse. It's going to create profound change in a community where they have no access to the school for 80% of the population. They don't have access to the only health care facility when it's raining. You know, that kind of access, someone is pregnant, well, I sure hope that she doesn't give birth in July because you don't pass over that river in July. If you have a bridge, that's year-round access and that is increased maternal health, you know, decreased child mortality, we've seen direct relationships, increased commerce. You know, you have markets, farmers are able to store their goods and take them to market when they have the highest value rather than just having to take them before the rain hits. They're being able to have increased job opportunities on the one school in Peru, more than half the population is on the one side of the river. I think it's about 80% actually, if you think about the entire rural spread of how people live in rural developing countries. Do in order to get to the one market on Saturday, you're needing to cross that bridge during the three months that are rainy. So that opens up an incredible opportunities, both commercially, as, like, as a job, maybe you can be a vendor, something like this, but also as a farmer. You can take your goods and you can actually see the value that you've earned. Um, and you know, I think as time's progressed, that initial project has remained very special. Um, perhaps because it was for the first time uh, a realization that I could have a team outside of sports and you know, I could rely on people. And I had these four other individuals who would do anything for me and I for them in a setting where we were moving towards the common good and we had a goal and we had a very tangible goal with a deadline. Well I think first and foremost when the bridge was complete it was a lot of satisfaction. You know the entire community, the regional mayor, so the alcalde, came in through a big festival and you know they sacrificed animals and over a hundred children go and they stand on the bridge as an opening day sort of uh, appreciation and speech upon speech upon speech being translated, thank goodness, at that point, um, just expressing the gratitude, 
thank you. You know, if we had the technology to do this before, we would have. We're not lazy people. We built this entire bridge. You know, they donate the labor for the entire project. But we needed you guys to come be that catalyst. And I think I, you know, I remember like tearing up and welling up and looking at my four friends and just saying like, I thought this project was, it was incredible, but this just blew me out of the water. Bridges to Prosperity is a nonprofit organization for about the ten, last 10 years has focused on reaching some of the world's poorest people in the most rural and isolated communities and providing them access. So access to healthcare, access to clinics, access to economic opportunities and education and doing that by training local people how to build footbridges. And it sounds so incredibly simple, but as an organization, I think we're filling a very unique niche. Um, in fact, we're the only nonprofit organization that only focuses on bridges. And um, they're really a catalyst for change. So we come in and say, let's work for a few years, let's really get this set and, and dialed, and we're gonna walk away and this is going to be a sustainable program in your country and we don't have to be an enabler you know we can walk away and, and feel like we've done something really profound but not make a dependency out of the situation yeah. in eastern Ethiopia uh, where the Blue Nile splits Gondar from Gojam uh, it's a really rural village where a young lady Bonchamlik had had boiling scalding water in fact accidentally poured over her entire right chest and arm area in such a way by the time that I arrived and was in the midst of building a bridge project she was incapacitated for half of her body and in an area where rural farming and manual labor are certainly the only avenue to survive it was in my opinion somewhat of a death sentence for this young lady um, and having the opportunity to go in and see the only other option of being able to get across the river is to have a rope held by six of your most trusted friends as they pull you across this gorge um, in comparison to being able to put something that easily is accessible Von Chomlik may have been able to get help a little sooner may have been able to get to the clinic to have a doctor rather than have excessive scarring that has left her in a, in a condition that really does not help her lifestyle in, in rural Ethiopia whatsoever. And I think for me it was one of the first personal stories where I saw what could happen and what did and what the profound impact one project could have. So had that bridge project been there four years previous, how would she been able to have possibly saved herself? And it really, I think, begs the question of for every story you know, how many are there that you don't? And how many women who have been pregnant who have had complications can now use a bridge to get to that clinic? And how many children who otherwise stop at grade two at their local school can now go up through the sixth grade by going to the, across the bridge to the slightly larger school? I mean, there are kinds of impact stories that, given the opportunity, I think would be endless to sit in the community and really find out what kind of access can be provided. I think it's just, I like to say it's a first world problem or a third world problem. So going through the day, someone cuts me off in traffic, first world problem. <laughs> you, know, you can either get angry about it, you can be annoyed, or you can just kind of contextualize, you know, what is it that's agitating about the situation. Um, and I think the developing world is so hard to generalize, but their level of stressors are at a, a completely different level than what you and I see on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, their stress is, where am I getting my next meal? How am I going to feed, clothe, and shelter my family? Um, I think the unfortunate reality in a lot of war-torn areas is, that, am I going to be alive tomorrow? And it's a different hierarchy of concerns than what am I wearing that's cute today? Or, you know, what is my next restaurant that I feel like it's gonna be really great? Or that my friend said this or that. And I think just a very slow transition in my personal life has been trying to take a step back 
in a lot of the things that in the past had stressed me out or felt so incredibly profound and couldn't get over that, that hurdle, that mountain. And you know, I think once you gain perspective, you realize, well, that mountain's nothing more than just a pebble in the road. And you take a step back and it's, it's a lot easier, I think, to be able to kind of roll with the punches when you realize that there are people out there with problems much bigger than yours. And um, especially if you feel like you can help try to alleviate some of those problems. I think perseverance is kind of the key ingredient to a lot of the success that I've, I've had throughout my life. Um, and certainly being given privilege and given opportunity. Uh, but it's also seeing opportunity when it comes um, and it lands in your lap, so to speak. And certainly many people can find themselves in Fiji studying abroad. Uh, but I was the only student sitting at the booth at the Breast Cancer Foundation on Saturday morning trying to work with local community members in getting education. And it's not that I saw a direct end goal from some of those efforts, but maybe just knowing blindly that I was learning and I was gaining from those experiences in a way that ultimately was going to get me to wherever that next step was going to be. And I think perseverance is, is a little bit of blind faith. You don't always know why it is that you're pushing or where it is that you're going. But as long as I think passion is, is behind you and you've got some idea that you want to do this, I think pushing forward towards that goal is, is certainly necessary, whether you're an athlete or an academic or someone just being a vagabond trying to find that next stop on the road. You really have to kind of keep pushing. Uh, humility has been taught from the travels, certainly. Um, differences. Uh, and also similarities. I think we are all so much more similar than we are different. And for me, I had to go halfway across the world to figure that out. I had to, you know, find myself with a backpack and no map in the middle of India to know what, what wait, these people are just as gentle and sincere and nice as people back home. So it was, it's been a good experience having gone to 30 odd countries on uh, six continents and really realize that we're all much more similar than we are different. I spend a lot of time in thinking about how can I be very transparent and how can I think about all of the unintended consequences of what I do. You know, for a bridge, I'm providing access. So that child that is adding six years to his um, opportunity in education goes from a sixth grade education to twelfth what's the likelihood he's going to stay in the rural community and help better that community? Well, he's probably going to leave to the bigger town or the bigger municipal regional area. Does that mean what I'm doing is 100% correct? Well, no. That means that there is an unintended consequences to everything that everyone does. And I think in whatever you do, always questioning it from a holistic perspective. Always do something that makes you uncomfortable or put you in a position to meet new people and do things that you wouldn't do otherwise. And you'll be surprised what kind of result comes out of it. So, you know, for me that was, I'm going to go live in Fiji. <laughs> I don't even know where that is on a map, right? And it's just knowing that that kind of experience is going to create overall growth.